Will Clark is uh, with us here tonight and uh, in the studio. Great to have you back no, in St. Louis. Great to be yeah. back. Great to see you yeah, guys, Rick, man. It's, it's awesome seeing you and being here in the ballpark. I mean, it's fabulous coming and being in front of the fans again. I uh, had a little autograph session earlier today, and it was it was wonderful. I mean, it really was good. What comes back to mind for you? It was, it was a brief time here in St. Louis, but you're back here. What, what comes to mind? You know, um, we had uh, we had had a pretty good little ball club back oh, in 2000 yeah. and had a good run of things and came up just a hair short against the Mets but I think it sort of set the precedent for the Cardinals moving forward and you know you get the the Albert Pujols era and then you know after that you know the Cardinals keep up the winning ways they've won several world championships since then and uh, I think we kind of got it going for them. Absolutely. I, think you, I think you need to know Will that people in St. Louis still talk about Will Clark coming to the Cardinals and having this incredible impact. I mean, you had yeah. 12 home runs. You had 340. I mean, you weren't here that long. You had a ton of RBIs. <laughs> but your impact, you need to know that it's continuing. Well, here. thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, when I got here, Tony La Russa called me in the office, and he said, hey, look, you know, he said, uh, we let the players police themselves. And he said, that's what I want you to do. He says, I want you to get out there and run the clubhouse. And I'm like, Sounds great to me. I was having a oh boy. I had a lot of fun doing it. JD Drew and Ricky I was and Keel. Just bring that yeah, up. JD Drew and Ricky and Keel took some beating. <laughs> we'll have to ask Rick about that. Yeah, Rick Rick didn't mention that in his book, I don't think. <laughs> I remember being on the plane and you were just wearing JD out. It was so much fun. <laughs> Will Clark and oh that sweet goodness. swing. Man, just 51 games, but the 345 average, the 12 home runs. You drove in 42 and 51 games. McGuire got hurt. Cardinals go get Will Clark. And they wanted to bring you back, but you said yeah. no. You know, uh, big Mac had surgery. And, uh, you know, Tony told me, he said, hey, look, you know, you'd have to be an outfielder or a utility guy. And that's the old dog new tricks thing. And, yep. you know, hey, look, I'm just going to. I'm going to go home, be daddy and husband. And uh, we had a, a autistic young son at that time. We had seen a lot of improvement in him during the offseason. So it made sense. Sure. Yeah, no, it was fantastic. The, the number of years that uh, you hit over 300 now and you get, getting to do one in uh, in St. Louis. But for years, we saw you doing that with the Giants. Yeah. And, and, of course, we remember 1987 right. uh, when right. uh, your team was so good and our team was so good and we had some battles. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I was talking about that earlier. It's it was it's a, a mirror reflection of franchises. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, both franchises had a his, hi, history that's unbelievable. They got yeah. all kinds of Hall of Famers running around and then both both teams were winning at the time and, you know, trying to get in the World Series. It made for some spirited battles. Uh, we not only had a few games, we had a few fist fights. We did everything. <laughs> I got to ask we you. We had it all. From your perspective and your old school, is that fair to say? Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. One, one flap down. What oh. did you think of that? Oh, my goodness. So, so <laughs> you know, he, he did the one flap down thing. We're talking about Jeffrey Leonard in the playoffs, hit four straight homers. And uh, after his fourth one, you know, I was the next guy up there. And <laughs> Bob Forsh was on the mound. I was, I was sort of grimacing. I was like, oh, is he going to get me? Is he going to get me? And he didn't get me, right? And so the next time around through the lineup, he absolutely drilled Jeffrey Leonard right in the ribs, right? And so uh, when I was playing for the Cardinals, I, I saw Bob a little later, and I came up to him, and I said, Bob, I said, I want to thank you. And I shook his hand. He goes, for what, Will? And I go, thank goodness you didn't drill me in the yeah, ribs. Right. You, got, you got Jeff in the ribs. Well, you had, you had such a I, – one of the things I loved about it, you, and I, I could see from 60 feet, six inches away, you had this look on your face. And, and I read a quote where Kevin Mitchell said you had a – Clint Eastwood scowl <laughs> when you were at the plate. I mean, was that something you just was that came natural for you or part of competing? Yeah, I think it was more competing and, you know, wanting to focus. You know, you you know, you got the baseball coming in. You got all kinds of craziness going on around you, especially, as you well know, at Candlestick. You know, oh, you got the hot dog mm. wrappers blowing and all that. And so you needed to focus, and I, that's that was just my focus mechanism. We just showed a little video of that brawl yeah. at second base. Uh, have you and Ozzy talked about it at all ever? Uh, not really. Uh, okay. oh, Kendall was my third base coach when I was here, so he and I, we, we're good. We're, we're good. good. Okay. Yeah, we're all good. All right. But uh, Ozzy and I hadn't talked about it. But that, that actually started from the night before because – uh, we were uh, we were down seven nothing in the eighth, and Vince yep. Vince Coleman stole second and stole third, and we were like, we're gonna drill you, and nobody ever drilled Vince, and so I said, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get my two cents in there, and well, you, you mentioned the Jeff, line. what's you the mentioned, line? Well, it, well, that was the Roger Craig yeah. and Whitey Herzog standing at home play. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. where you were standing, but we were right there, and, and yeah. Roger said. Uh, 
Whitey, I know you weren't wouldn't endorse that, and he said, uh, "The heck, I didn't. Um, we're going to run. We're going to run until you stop, stop hitting." hitting. Right. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, we had all kinds yeah. of uh, action on the yeah, field. Yeah, we had we had a few little action out there, but it was fun. You know, it was funny. It was all. It made for a great playoff race it in '86. Sure <laughs> you did. know, but great so respect. Was, great respect for your entire team. Yeah, and, 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 and the same thing. And the same thing here. I mean, you know, you guys were unbelievable. You know, events and. Willie McGee and Tommy Hurd and Jack and I mean just the pitching staff you guys had with Tudor and the guys and yourself I mean it was it was unbelievable and, and, and it was it was actually fun to go in and face a team like that in a great environment like this in St. Louis. Yeah. What do you think about the game today. I think the game is very soft. To be, I expected to be that answer. Absolutely yeah. blunt. It's way more touchy feely. Uh, you know, you got to watch how you go into second base. Can't hit the catcher. You know, you got all kinds of rule changes. Twenty second clock. It's like, dude, we've been playing this thing for 150 years. Leave the sport alone. Let us play. Yeah. I think, I think there's a lot of truth to I it. Think, I think that 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 sentiment is uh, echoed by a lot of other people yeah, from I, our era. Yeah, exactly. You know, the guys guys from our era, you know, are right there with me. And then, you know, some of the young guys are like, well, you know, uh, I got to go look at it on the white box on the replay. And like, <laughs> we didn't have no white box. If if Rick if Rick was painting the outside corner, you got four more inches. That's the way it worked. Mm -hmm. Right. You right. know, so you just adjusted. That was the game back then. So I mean, I honestly, um, I think about those uh, rivalries. I think about pitching to you. Uh, you were a scary guy at the plate because you did something that Jim Edmonds does. I don't know. Not if you, only at the plate, he still is. Well, he's still scary. <laughs> but, but they both had the ability to to open up their upper half and turn on a pitch on the inside. Yeah. And is that something that you would characterize? You think about your swing. You just had this just a beautiful swing from the left side and I, I see Jim Edmonds in that and exactly and Jimmy and I talked about it you know when we played together is you know you pick your spots right you know because you're going to get pitched away a lot you know so you got to stay closed like you talked about but then every now and then you pick your spot to come in and like you said open up the shoulders get the head out you know the beauty of, of having like Will Clark here and the and the other guys that come through is that when they're playing I always wanted to ask him various questions and you're like eh, I don't know Will <laughs> I don't need a black guy going on the air, you know. <laughs> but now I feel okay with it. Well, you might still get one. Depending, still on you <laughs> depending on where I go. Will Clark, by the way, is with us um, back in St. Louis. So I'm curious. In '89, it's the the Bay Bridge series, and yep. everybody was talking about the, clearly what was most important: families and and so many people affected by the earthquake. But there was the baseball too. Right. Um, when you got to St. Louis, did you ever talk to Tony about that? You know, Tony and I, uh, we had we had played against each other for so long because we played eight or nine games against each other in spring training and then the postseason. Yeah. And I knew him just as well as he knew me player coach wise. And when I had him as my manager in St. Louis, it was phenomenal because he absolutely turned the clubhouse over to the veterans. But yet at the same time, he came very well prepared. He gave you all the information you needed to go out there and be successful. And it was up to you to do it. And so we delegated it out there to the clubhouse. It's like, hey, this is time to be a big boy. So step on up. So you like you enjoyed playing for Tony, very competitive guy, obviously. But I, I feel like you were kind of the perfect guy for him too. I mean, it, maybe your style fit that. I, I mean, you were you were old school. And yeah, that's it, what he likes. Yeah, exactly. And then you know, I was like his hatchet man. You know, he'd call <laughs> me in the office, hey, go pick on this guy. You know, like, all right, all right, here we go. And Keel, I wore him out. I wore now, JD Drew now, out. Now, was that easier or harder for you to do since you didn't come up as a Cardinal and you just joined the team midway? You know, I, I had had a little uh, inkling in the back of my mind that this might be the last hurrah. So I, if I was going out, I was going out guns blazing. So <laughs> it. It, was, it, it was game on. <laughs> I, I got to ask you. Did, did like JD or I don't think Rick would ever do this, but were they ever like, you know, Will, please, enough. <laughs> I've had enough. I mean, I get it, but I've just had enough. You know what? You know what? It was it was more, you know, you give them a little grief and then you pat them on the yeah, back. Yeah. And come on, you're all right. Yeah. You're all right. So, I mean, there was a little, there was a little both. But, uh, you know, when, when you got them in the back of the airplane, as you well know, I mean, you talk strategy. It's like, hey, why are you looking for this? You should be looking for this, you know. And, and it was more talking. But then when, when you got out on the field and then they screwed up on the field, it was like, Oh, wait a second. Come here, son. <laughs> Come here, son. There is something wrong here. <laughs> so, so you're talking, Will, about the game baby being a little different in that regard. And you're still around the game. You're yep. still very close to it. And, and and you know what's going on. And, and working for the and Giants. And working for the Giants. Yep. So uh, in, in organizations that you see, are there Will Clark-type players still around that can do that at the big league level? You know what? There are. Bader hits yeah. one out to deep left at 
the wall, and it's off the wall. This young man can fly, Will. Yep. To second. On his way to third. Back in the big leagues. First at bat, stand-up triple, Harrison Bader. That was a nice swing right there. You'd like him. He's yeah, you'd love a tough him. kid. Yeah. I like how he plays defense, too. That's, that was, that's what I like. He can go get it. Yeah, he, he got a good jump on that ball in the first inning, too. Well, there's the pitch. It's up in the zone, and Bader, who Dan had three home runs in his last four games in AAA, uh, showed that power again. I think his confidence is back, too. When he was struggling a bit, the confidence, especially offensively, uh, was not there, but I think he's got it back. It's a nine-game hit streak coming into play tonight down in the minor leagues, so he picks up the leadoff triple, and it's Michael Walker. But let's go back to Rick's uh, yeah, question. The question, you know, about being old school. I mean, I like I like certain guys. I mean, I, I love Trout. Uh, I like Yelich. I mean, you know, I mean, he's left-handed and just hits line drives Boy, all over we'll the place. Go out on a limb. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, don't be afraid to pick the big yeah, guys. Exactly. But, uh, you know, a guy like I like is D. Young. I mean, you know, I mean, just a steady, nice ball player, you know, plays the game the right way. I like those guys. You give me eight or nine scrappy guys that play the game the right way, we're mm -hmm. going to win. We are going to win. I don't, need, I don't need a ton of boppers. What do you think of sabermetrics and analytics in, in its uh, place in the game? Throw it out the window. Mm -hmm. You That's know, the, the launch angle and the exit velocity and all that. One of my, one of my minor leaguers asked me the other day, he says, Coach, what was your average exit velocity? I said, well, if I got a double and I was rounding first going to second, I said, it was pretty good. I said, <laughs> but if I was an out and I said I was walking back to the dugout, I said it was pretty bad. Right. <laughs> I love it. Now this is results. what we expected when we well, brought exactly. Will Clark up here. <laughs> I exactly. love it. That's hilarious. Yeah, well, well, you know, what was your average exit? Was it 110? No, you either hit the hell out of it or you didn't. <laughs> That's kind of the game, isn't it? Exactly. It exactly. is interesting, though, because you're tied in, you know, with the front office, and we know it's part of the game. It's part of every front office. And yeah. then I, there's got to be a balance, though, between that and – you and a guy that played the game and knows how to play the game. Exactly. And, you know, look, I, you know, once the ball's in flight, as, as Rick well knows, you know, all those numbers go out the window. Right. And, you know, it's reaction and what you've been doing your whole life. Those those numbers and stuff like that, that's for negotiation purposes later. Yeah. Makes so sense. One of the other things about you, Will, that people don't always talk about is your defense, too. I mean, I mean your offense, your career. And so as you – have a chance to be around baseball is that something that you can still coach and teach or yeah, and, yeah, and, and focus on I mean there's a lot there's so many nuances to defense that people don't understand yeah, exactly and, and believe it or not defense is timing just like hitting is yeah. I mean you have, have to have a rhythm ball has to come through the zone you're getting in fielding position and Roger Craig always used to tell me he says you're not going to be four for four every night there's going to be a bunch of oh for fours he said but you're going to have to play some defense because we're going to stop the other team Absolutely. I don't remember any of those oh for fours that he had against oh, us yeah, there we go. I couldn't get a hit off of you. You, you ate my lunch. You must be thinking about John Tudor. <laughs> the other lefty. One ball, one strike on Fowler. You know, it's also really good that, you know, I mean, the Cardinals – bringing back the alumni. I mean, I know you guys have the Tuesday deals and then you'll have the Saturday autograph signings and all that. That's, that shows you what a class organization the Cardinals are and how, how they treat their alumni, how, how they want their fans to intermingle with their alumni. I think it's wonderful. It's awesome. 75 former Cardinals that live in the greater St. Louis area that are from other places and have just decided to stay here and stay connected to the community. And anytime somebody comes back like you come back, you know, once a Cardinal, always a Cardinal. Exactly. Even, even exactly. if it was for a short, you know, yeah. your short time counts for a lot more than just the uh, the few months that you well, were here. You know, I mean, you know, it was a short time for me, but I'll tell you one thing. It was it was at the end of my career, and if I was going to go out, I was going out on top of the mountain, and, and St. Louis provided me that. I mean, just the whole experience was phenomenal. So when you heard that Walt was going to make the deal to get you to say, and, and at that time, I remember, you were being rumored all over the place. Right. Um, what, what was your reaction when you heard St. Louis? You know, <laughs> it was, it was kind of funny because, you know, Baltimore, I remember having this discussion with the GM in Baltimore. Yeah. He goes, the only team that wants you is St. Louis. And I go, what? I go, you want me to pay for the plane flight? Are you going to pay for it? I'm hot. 
So I, I went from Baltimore last place to St. Louis first place, and it was it was just I mean a. It was love as soon as I got here. I mean, you know, I admired the fans, you know, from a distance being a visiting player coming in and now being a home player here. It was phenomenal. Did you feel it right away? Right first away. First at bat, right first away. time on the yeah. field. Right away. It, yeah. was, it was amazing. Right I, away. I think there was a call by Jack Buck, in, and I don't know if you remember this, but you had hit a home run in right center at Bush Stadium, too, and you were on a roll. And there's a ground ball, could be, too, and they said... There's a new hero in town. Do you remember that? <laughs> I do remember that. I do remember that. You know, th that's the that's the one thing. And Big Mac, t Big Mac, and I talked about it. Is like, you know, there are certain guys, and as you well know, there's certain guys in our generation. They wanted to be up there when the lights were on. Yeah. Nice it's to awesome. have the hero back in town. It's awesome. Great to see you. Thank you, you so much. Thanks, Great Will. seeing you guys. Yeah, you guys Great. are the best. Come Thank back you again. so much. Thank you. A lot of fun. Will Clark with us here on Fox Sports Midwest.